Hey guys, my name is Senti. I am a coin made of gold that was mined in Kirkland Lake, Ontario. People have been mining gold in Kirkland Lake for more than a hundred years, and it has some of the highest grade gold ore in the world. Oh. Want to see where I come from? Follow me down this mine shaft. So here we are in a gold mine, 5,400 feet below surface. At any given time, there can be over 200 men and women down here working on mining gold. And the tunnels stretch for more than a kilometer in different directions. But how did the gold get here in the first place, you may ask? Well, we live on thin sheets of rock called tectonic plates. The tectonic plates are about 10 kilometers thick and are kind of just floating on top of the molten rock. As the plates get pushed around, sometimes they crack. The cracks in the plates are called faults. So what about the gold? The gold deposit in Kirkland Lake is called a hydrothermal deposit. Very hot water that has gold and other minerals dissolved in it is forced up into the cracks in the rock. Over time, the water dried up, leaving behind quartz, malignum, copper, and gold. These cracks that are now filled with minerals are called veins, and that's where the gold comes from. Let's see how they get the gold from the veins up to the surface. The process starts with a geologist. Fortunately, my best friend is a geologist. Her name is Stephanie Friedrich, and she works at Kale Gold. Come on, let's go ask her about her job. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Senti. How are you? I'm good as gold. What are you up to? I'm logging core. Oh, like cutting down trees? No, nothing to do with trees. Core samples are long cylinders of rock like this one. Drillers use diamond drills to drill core samples. The samples can be drilled from surface or underground. The geologist's job is to look at the core and find the gold. Uh, we use this information to figure out where the gold is located in the ground. Oh, I see. So you guys are kind of like detectives. Your job is to find the gold and tell the miners which way to dig. Yeah, that's right. Can you tell me a bit about the vein that I come from? You're from a vein in the South Mine complex, just like this core. The veins contain gold in the SMC, are generally flat lying and angled to the south. They link between the main break and the amalgamated break, which are steep regional structures. Thanks, Steph. I'll let you get back to your logging. Bye, Senti. Stay golden. You know I will. After the geologist determines the best direction for the tunnel to go, the miners can move big drills and drill holes in the wall for the explosives. Wait, explosives? Let's get out of here! It turns out they don't actually set off the explosion until everyone is above ground. After all the charges are set, everyone needs to go up the elevator to the surface and this shift goes home for a rest. After everyone is clear, KABOOM! When the next shift arrives, the first thing they do is reinforce the tunnel to make sure it doesn't collapse on anyone. There was an explosion after all. Once it is safe, the muckers come in. The muckers go to the ends of each tunnel called the face and dig out all the rubble from the explosion. The muck is sorted into ore, that's the good stuff, and slag, that's the waste. The ore is then dumped down an ore pass into buckets and taken up the elevator to the surface. Once the muck is cleared out, the whole cycle starts again. Dump trucks carry the ore over to the mill. The mill is where the gold is separated out from the ore. The first stop just outside of the mill is the crusher. When the ore is brought to the surface, it is in pieces about the size of a bowling ball. The crusher crushes the ore down into gravel, where the largest pieces are about the size of a little grape. This is called the fine ore. From the crusher, the fine ore gets transported up a long conveyor belt into the fine ore bin. The fine ore bin can hold up to 1,600 tons of ore. Another conveyor belt brings the ore from the base 
of the bin into the mill. The ore is put inside giant rotating drums full of steel balls. The drums grind the ore down to a powder that gets washed out of the drum with water. The solution is called the slurry and looks actually a bit like mud. So far, everything that has happened to the ore has been physical changes. Now that it's small enough, it's time to get chemical. The slurry is run through tanks full of activated carbon made from coconut shells. Activated carbon is amazing stuff. One spoonful could unfold to actually cover a whole soccer field. But when it's all crumpled up like this, it's perfect for catching precious metals. Once the carbon is loaded up with metals, the rest of the slurry heads off to the tailings pond to get cleaned up. And the loaded carbon goes into a pressure tank with cyanide, water, and other chemicals. The heat and pressure in the tank force the metals and the carbon back into the water. Sound familiar? Remember hydrothermal deposit? High pressure water containing metals? Anyway, William Ty is the engineer in charge of the mill. Let's hear what he has to say about how they get the gold out of the water. All right, so by the time the uh, material comes into the refinery, it's a solution. We call it loaded solution. It's typically between six to 13 ounces per ton uh, gold. It goes through two electro winning cells, the gold plates onto the uh, cathodes. That material is collected weekly. We drain out the uh, electro winning cells every week. The concentrate goes through the filter press where we dewater it, remove the moisture. It goes into an oven overnight. We get a dry concentrate and that dry concentrate is the material that uh, goes into the furnace. The last step is the coolest and the end of this huge process involving a thousand people and countless machines. It's time to pour. The concentrated powder is put into a super hot melting pot, then poured into a cascade of molds. Gold is the heaviest, so it sinks to the bottom of each mold, and everything else flows over top. The bars are about 80% pure gold, and each one weighs around 70 pounds. The gold bars are then shipped from Kirkland Lake to a refinery, where it is purified even more. The gold gets turned into electronics, jewelry, and, of course, KL100 coins, like me. Thanks for joining me on this adventure through Kirkland Lake Gold. For more videos and information about their operation, check out klgold.com. Until next time, stay golden.